today, uh, we're going to be focusing on the story of Joseph. Um, so in uh, our, our first reading, our Genesis reading, uh, is a, just a small piece of Joseph's story. Uh, and so we're going to expand that a little bit and, and think about Joseph uh, completely, and especially Joseph as someone who uh, gets a promise, maybe sort of like our confirmands, and has to be confirmed in that promise again and again. And we're going to talk a little bit about what that is and how that happens today. Um, is the Facebook streaming working now? Oh, great. So uh, if you're joining us on Facebook, uh, maybe you already know uh, things aren't quite normal. We had a power outage, so we're streaming on a phone. Uh, so hopefully you can hear me all right. I'm sure I'm echoier uh, than usual. I'm projecting. I'm glad that we have this nice uh, open and echoey space that you can all uh, hopefully hear me in. Uh, if you can't hear me, just, you know, yell, speak louder, and I'll try and remember to boost my volume a little bit. Um, I think that's all the uh, notes on the service going in that I have. So I invite you to take a moment now uh, to set aside all the worries of the day, uh, to set aside the worries of what our power is going to do over the next uh, hour or so, uh, to set aside all of the things that have been uh, bothering you, haunting you in the back of your mind. Set those aside for the moment. And prepare to hear what God has for you today, what the Holy Spirit, who still is blowing through this room even now, will have for you this morning. I invite you to do that as we listen to our prayer.
love of God and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with you all. And also with you.
so that you and your household and all that you have will not come to poverty. And he kissed all his brothers and wept upon them. And after that, his brothers talked with him. The word of God, the word of life. Thanks be to God. be provoked by evil doers. Do not be jealous of those who do wrong, for they shall soon wither like the grass, and like the green grass fade away. Put your trust in the Lord and do good. Dwell in the land and find safe pasture. Take delight in the Lord, who shall give you your heart's desire. Commit your way to the Lord, put your trust in the Lord, and see what God will do. The Lord will make your vindication as clear as the light, and the justice of your case like the noonday sun. Be still before the Lord and wait patiently. Do not be provoked by the one who prospers, the one who succeeds in evil schemes. Refrain from anger, leave rage alone. Do not be provoked, it leads only to evil. For evildoers shall be cut off, but those who hope in the Lord shall possess the land. In a little while the wicked shall be no more. Even if you search out their place, they will not be there. But the lowly shall possess the land. They will delight in abundance of peace. But the deliverance of the righteous comes from you, O Lord. You are their stronghold in time of trouble. You, O Lord, will help them and rescue them. You will rescue them from the wicked and deliver them, because in you they seek refuge. Gospel according to St. Luke, the sixth chapter. Glory to you, O Lord. Jesus said, But I say to you that listen, love your enemies, do good to those who hate you, 
Bless those who curse you. Pray for those who abuse you. If anyone strikes you on the cheek, offer the other also. From anyone who takes away your coat, do not withhold even your shirt. Give to everyone who begs from you. And if anyone takes away your goods, do not ask for them again. Do to others as you would have them do to you. If you love those who love you, what credit is that to you? Even, even sinners love those who love them. If you do good to those who do good to you, what credit is that to you? Even sinners do the same. If you lend to those from whom you hope to receive, what credit is that to you? Even sinners lend to sinners to receive as much again. But love your enemies, do good and lend, expecting nothing in return. Your reward will be great, and you will be children of the Most High. He is kind to the ungrateful and the wicked. Be merciful, just as your Father is merciful. Do not judge, and you will not be judged. Do not condemn, and you will not be condemned. Forgive, and you will be forgiven. Give, and it will be given to you. A good measure, pressed down, shaken together, running over, will be placed into your lap. For the measure you give will be the measure you get back. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise, Praise to you, O Christ. Please be seated. Beloved people of God, grace to you and peace from God our Father and the Lord Jesus Christ. Amen. Well, Joseph has a lot of reasons to think of himself as someone who is pretty special. From the very beginning of his life, he has had reason to think of himself as someone who has a lot going for him. After all, Joseph is the great-grandson of Abraham and Sarah, that couple to whom God first said, I will make of you a great nation. Through you all the families of the earth will be blessed. He's the grandson of Isaac, that child who was miraculously born to parents who were well past 80 because of this promise. Isaac, whose name means laughter, laughter at the joy of a new child for an old childless couple, and also laughter at the ridiculousness of the promise that it is through this particular pair of people that God will bring a great nation. Joseph is the son of Jacob. Jacob, who himself was the younger of the two brothers, and yet whose mother had received a promise even while he and his brother were both in the womb, saying, the elder will serve the younger, which is the backwards order of how things typically are. Jacob, who after he fled from his brother's wrath, and envy at Jacob's uh, taking, usurping of his place as the firstborn, returned, having married the love of his life, as well as her sister and two of their slaves. It was a different time. <laughs> returned back and encountered a man in the night who turned out to be God somehow, who wrestled with him through the night. And when Jacob wrestled with God, and held God to account for the promise God had given him, God changed Jacob's name. No longer will he be Jacob, which in Hebrew means something like he cheats. His name will be Israel, the one who has wrestled with God, and who has prevailed with God. Joseph has all of this in his lineage. Of course, so do his other eleven Brothers, ten of whom are older than him. But Joseph has even more going for him. Because he is the firstborn son, not of his father, of course, but the firstborn son of his mother, of Rachel, his father's favorite wife, the one whom Jacob worked seven years in order to be able to marry. And uh, the, the reading, in, or the verse in Genesis says, uh, the seven years were passed like just a few days, so great was Jacob's love for Rachel. Joseph is the, or the, the firstborn child of his father's favorite. And Joseph himself is his father's favorite. And his father makes it very clear by giving him this coat. You remember this multicolored coat, the technicolor dream coat, to uh, quote the musical. Uh, Joseph has received this coat as a sign of his father's favor for him. He knows 
he is the favored one. He knows he is the favorite. Not only has his father favored him, but it seems that God is favoring him. For Joseph gets these dreams. These dreams that aren't just the random jumbled thoughts of a sleepy mind, but rather these dreams that are messages, promises from God. He gets a dream like his brothers and him collecting the wheat, gathering them into sheaves, and then his sheaf stands tall in the center while the sheaves of his brothers and of his father bow before him. Or another dream where there's the sun and the moon and twelve stars, and the one star representing him is bowed down to by all of those other heavenly bodies. Joseph knows he is the favored one. He knows he is destined for greatness. Of course, his brothers also are aware of this. And if you know the story of Joseph, you remember that things don't go so well for him. In fact, his brothers, at the first opportunity they have, when Joseph is 17 and he's away uh, from home and they're out uh, with the flocks far away where no one can see what's going on, they decide to get rid of this Joseph. They decide to kill him and then they think a little bit better of it. They say, you know what, we'll just throw him in a pit and we'll let nature take its course. And then another opportunity comes by, uh, some traveling traders, and they take Joseph out of the pit, and they say, you know what, we might as well profit from this, and they sell him as a slave. And he's carried as a slave down to Egypt, and he will spend the rest of his life living in Egypt. He will never return to live in the place of his father, or his grandfather, or his great-grandparents. He'll never return to live in the land that God has promised to his family. He will only return once, so far as we know, and that is to bury his father after his father dies, some decades later. Joseph is living as a slave in Egypt, but he has some good fortune. He is uh, sold into a wealthy house. And uh, that is better than some other places he could serve as a slave. And in fact, the text says that God is with Joseph even as he is sold into slavery. And God is with Joseph so that Joseph is successful in everything that he does. And his master, Potiphar, notices this and puts him in charge of the whole household. Makes him uh, almost more powerful than anyone else in the household. Joseph is in charge of everything. And then some false accusations come. And his master believes them, and his master puts him into prison. But God is with Joseph. And even in prison, his, uh, his, his success shows itself, and the chief jailer puts him in charge of all of the prison. It's sort of a consolation prize again. Not, I guess not as good as being in charge of a wealthy household, but at least he's not in the bottom of the prison. And Joseph is there for a while, and he encounters two of his uh, fellow prisoners who are servants of Pharaoh, the chief cupbearer, and the bread, uh, the baker for Pharaoh. And they are in prison after having been accused of, of, of some sort of treachery against Pharaoh. And they have these dreams, and they come to Joseph, and they say, we've heard, uh, we have these dreams. And Joseph says, hey, I know a thing or two about dreams, and interpreting dreams. And they tell him his dreams, and he, he tells them, well, the dream is that you, the one, will be uh, acquitted, and you will be restored to your former position. To the other, he says... You will be condemned and sentenced to death. And this is what happens. And to the one who is acquitted, to the cupbearer, he says, Remember me. Remember, remember me. Remember your friend here in prison when you get restored to your position. And his friend, of course, immediately does not. So for two years later, uh, Joseph is still a slave in charge of a prison, but a slave nonetheless in a jail. But God is with him. Finally, Pharaoh himself has some dreams, and the cupbearer remembers that there was somebody who could interpret dreams. And he tells Pharaoh about Joseph. Joseph comes and he interprets the Pharaoh's dreams, and everything. The Pharaoh is so impressed with him that he puts him in charge of everything in Egypt. Pharaoh, uh, Joseph tells him that there's going to be these seven years of famine and then seven, seven years of plenty. And Pharaoh puts him in charge of collecting all of the grain in the storehouses so that everyone can weather the famine well enough. And Joseph is so successful of this that people are coming from far off lands, including the place of his birth, to get food for their households during this famine. Because Egypt has plenty while everyone else does not. 
God is with Joseph again and again, even though he goes through the worst on the way. Even though he is taken down into Egypt, down into prison, God is with him, we are told again and again. Finally, we come to the portion of the story that we read this morning, where Joseph is reunited with his brothers. They've come to buy food. Egypt has food, nobody else does. They've come to buy food, and Joseph recognizes them when they come. They don't recognize him, they've written them off for dead. But he recognizes them when they come in. And he starts to play with them a little bit. First he has them, and he says, oh sure, you can buy food. And then when they go, he has a servant say, he tells a servant to put, uh, put, some of them, their, or put their money back in their packs when you send them away. And then they get, you know, halfway down the road, and he sends somebody after them to say, why did you steal from our master? And they say, we didn't, we paid everything we did. And they find the money there. He does everything to do to frame his younger brother, so that the ten older brothers, the ones who threw him in a pit, have a choice. They can get away scot-free, leaving their younger brother with Joseph. Or they can interpose themselves, so that Benjamin, the youngest son of their father, can return and their father can be uh, can be happy, can rejoice. And they choose that. Judah stands and says, take me instead. Don't take Benjamin. Send Benjamin back. Take me instead. Hold me in prison. Throw me away. Just don't do this to our youngest brother. It would kill our father, they say. And when Joseph hears this, he breaks down and weeps. We read this in this passage. He breaks down and weeps and he finally reveals to his brothers who he is. He's been speaking with them through an interpreter this whole time. But he speaks to them in their language in Hebrew, and he says, I am Joseph, your brother. Now, that's not good news to them, because they know what they left. <laughs> and here he is weeping in front of them, and you never quite know what that means. But then Joseph keeps speaking, and he forgives them. And what's more than that, he says, God forgives them. Not just Joseph, but God. And then he says this amazing line, which just marvels me every time I read it here in verse uh, uh, 5 here. He says, uh, don't be angry with yourselves because you sold me here. He says, God sent me before you to preserve life. The famine has been in these land two years or five more years. God sent me before you to preserve a remnant on earth. To keep alive for you many survivors. It was not you who sent me here. It was God. <clears throat> and we look at that and we say, wait. The brothers did this. Not God. Wait, it was the slave traders who did this. It wasn't God. Wait, it was, it was Joseph's master who did this. Who believed these false accusations. It wasn't God. That's not what Joseph says. God is the one who sent me here before you. You intended it for evil. God intended it for good. And we see that Joseph, or that God rather, wasn't with Joseph only in the good times. When things started to move up, God was with Joseph every single step of the way. God never left Joseph's side. God never stopped working on Joseph's behalf, even when from Joseph's perspective, everything was as bad as it could possibly be. God was with Joseph. God was confirming Joseph in this promise that Joseph had grown up with his whole life. God kept repeating that promise in the bad and in the good, in the downs and in the ups. And God even did it in such a way that that promise finally made its way back around to those ten brothers who had thrown Joseph in that pit. God today is confirming a promise for these four confirmants. God has confirmed it many times before. God will confirm it many times to come. But today God is confirming that through us. These four confirmants will stand here before us. They will say amen to the promises that God gave them in their baptisms. They will say yes, we intend to live according to the covenant established by this promise. And we, the congregation, will say back to them, 
Amen as well. We, the congregation, will say we recognize this faith in you. And we commit to continue praying for you and supporting you in the life of faith. These confirmands need to hear that. They'll need to hear it next week and the week after. They'll need to hear it months and years down the road. When the circumstances of their life look more like Joseph on the way down to Egypt than they do a happy reunion with his brothers. They'll need to hear this promise again and again, and God, the Holy Spirit, will continue to make it, will continue to give it, continue to confirm it in them, just as God has continued to do this for all of us. For this is the sort of God we have, a God who is with us, even in the situations we sort of wish God wasn't with us. God is relentless in confirming this promise. God is relentless in, in caring for us, not just for this life, but for the life to come. Because God keeps making promises, and God is faithful to keep them. This is the hope in which we live, and it is the hope that will carry us through to the end of our lives. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Let us pray. 
Merciful God, we thank you for these brothers and sisters whom you have made your own by water and the word in baptism. You have called them to yourself, enlightened them with the gifts of your spirit, and nourished them in the community of faith. Uphold your servants in the gifts and promises of baptism, and unite the heart of all whom you have brought to new birth. We ask this in the name of Christ. Amen. Amen. I ask you to profess your faith in Christ Jesus, to reject sin, and to confess the faith of the church. Do you renounce the devil and all the forces that defy God? If so, say, I renounce them. I renounce them. Do you renounce the powers of this world that rebel against God? If so, say, I renounce them. I renounce them. Do you renounce the ways of sin that draw you from God? If so, say, I renounce them. I renounce them. I invite the congregation to stand and join us in the uh, uh, confessing the creed. Do you believe in God the Father? I believe in God the Father Almighty, Creator of heaven and earth. Do you believe in Jesus Christ, the Son of God? I believe in Jesus Christ, God's only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended to the dead. On the third day he rose again. He ascended into heaven. He is seated at the right hand of the Father, and He will come to judge the living and the dead. Do you believe in God, the Holy Spirit? I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of the saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. You may be seated. Abby, Jonathan, Sarah, and Will, you have made public profession of your faith. Do you intend to continue in the covenant God made with you in holy baptism? To live among God's faithful people? To hear his word and share in his supper? To proclaim the good news of God in Christ through word and deed? To serve all people following the example of our Lord Jesus and to strive for justice and peace in all the earth? And so say, I do and I ask God to help and guide me. People of God, I guess I should have left you standing, sorry. <laughs> Can you stand again? <laughs> People of God, do you promise to support these fellow believers and pray for them in their life in Christ? If so, yeah, we do. We do. We do. We do. We do. At this time, I want to invite the, the families of our contraband board. Uh, oh, actually. Yes, no, that's right. This time, I want to invite the families of our contraband forward. I'm going to have uh, you four kneel in your places around the altar here. And we're going to get the inside. And everyone else now can really sit down. And pray. Gather around your uh, your confirmants here. Let us pray. We give you thanks, O oh God, that through water and the Holy Spirit you give us new birth. Cleanse us from sin and raise us to eternal life. Amen. Father in heaven, for Jesus' sake, stir up in Abby the gift of your Holy Spirit. Confirm her faith, guide her life, empower her in her struggles, give her patience and suffering, and bring her to everlasting life. Amen. Father in heaven, for Jesus' sake, stir up in Jonathan the gift of your Holy Spirit. Confirm his faith, guide his life, empower him in his struggles, give him patience and suffering, and bring him to everlasting life. Amen. Father in heaven, for Jesus' sake, stir up in Sarah the gift of your Holy Spirit. Confirm her faith, guide her life, 
Empower her in her struggles. Give her patience in suffering and bring her to everlasting life. Amen. Father in heaven, for Jesus' sake, stir up in will the gift of your Holy Spirit. Confirm his faith. Guide his life. Empower him in his struggle. And give him patience in suffering. And bring him to each everlasting life. Amen. Uh, I'd like to invite Cheryl Connor to prevent, uh, you can stand and turn around and just face the front. Uh, Cheryl Connor has some prayer shawls. Cheryl, did you want to say anything about these? Uh, yes, I'll say a little bit. Uh, okay. I don't know if anything's on still. Do you have power? Sorry. Uh, yes, I am a member of the prayer shawl committee, and there's a prayer shawl committee. Let me hear you. Awesome. <laughs> Um, there's a few of us ladies in the church that do make prayer shawls for those that uh, are sick or in hospital and they need comfort in, and um, just God's loving hands around them and there's prayer shawls on them. We want to present one to the to Abby, Will, and Jonathan, and Sarah, and um, let them know that wherever these shawls are, whether they're in your drawer, on your bed, on your chair, on your body, your lap, whatever, you'll think of, of us and your uh, church family that will support you and, uh, and love you and um, and just uh, and God loves you. And this, this, is, this, this is going to be your comfort and your refuge. Call upon him. Okay. And I show gives those uh, out. Um, the, the color of the, of the shawl is actually important, that they're white, uh, which is a color of baptism, right? Uh, so anytime you see that white color, you can be reminded of your baptism, uh, of the promise that God has made to you and is now confirming and will continue to confirm, maybe through uh, something like this, um, but also through ways that you'll, you, that you don't expect. You're going to have to work your way through the audience. <laughs> All right, we'll continue. In con the congregation has, a, has a, a few lines here, so uh, please join me. Let us rejoice with our siblings in Christ. We rejoice with you in the life of baptism. Together we will give thanks and praise to God and proclaim the good news to all the world. As we can welcome them with applause too.
poured out upon us in abundance, so that we are bold to pray for the church, the world, and all that God has made. God of love, you teach us to love our neighbors and enemies alike. Give your church the courage to show love with humility, not asking anything in return, even to those who hate us. Help us to show mercy just as we have first received mercy. God of grace, hear our prayer. God of mercy, look upon our world with mercy, that we delight in an abundance of peace. Protect all whose lives are marred by war and civil unrest. Give shelter to refugees of all kinds. Ease tensions between neighbors and nations, particularly between Russia, Ukraine, and NATO allies. God of grace, God of comfort, your people cry out for mercy. Console hearts that long for forgiveness, mend broken relationships, heal bodies that suffer chronic pain or illness, strengthen and deliver all whose spirits are troubled. Give hope to those whose hopes have been crushed. God of grace, Lord of our ancestors, we thank you for what you have done and will continue to do with those who are confirmed today. Walk with Abby, Jonathan, Sarah, and Will throughout their lives and keep the evil one from obstructing their path. You see all. You know where the water is deep. Keep them from danger. Order their steps and guide their feet while they run the race of faith. God of grace. We also lift before you those people and situations we name either aloud or in our hearts. God of grace, since we have such great hope in your promises, O oh God, we lift these and all of our prayers to you in confidence and faith through Jesus Christ our Savior. Amen. The peace of the Lord be with you all. And yes. also with you. Go ahead and share it. A, a sign of peace. Um, yeah, among your hearts. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you.
working a little bit. Uh, but if you want to go ahead and uh, take that bread out, hold it up before you, so that you know that this promise of Jesus applies even to this little piece that you have here in your hand. In the night in which he was betrayed, our Lord Jesus took bread, and he broke it, and he gave thanks, and he gave it to his disciples, saying, Take and eat. This is my body, given for you. Do this for the remembrance of me. And again, after supper, he took the cup. And he gave thanks, and he gave it for all to drink, saying, This cup is the new covenant in my blood, shed for you and for all people, for the forgiveness of sins. Do this for the remembrance of me. Gathered into one by the Holy Spirit, let us pray as Jesus taught us. <clears throat> Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory, forever and ever. Amen. The body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ strengthen you and keep you in his grace. Amen. Amen. Uh, just a couple of announcements uh, to be brief. Um, uh, notice uh, the Stuff the Bus uh, fundraiser. This is uh, a partnership with Helping Hands. Um, so there's a fundraiser for uh, and some details about how to be involved in that. So just bring your attention to that. The other thing is uh, there will be no uh, uh, pastor's Bible study tomorrow night. Um, so I know that's two weeks in a row without a Monday evening Bible study. But we will pick back up next Monday. So none tomorrow, but we will uh, resume on our regular weekly schedule uh, the following Monday. Um, and then the other thing is, let's see, the fire practice? Fire started this Wednesday, 630. I need to have a vaccination information from both one person. Yeah, one person's really not happy about fire. <laughs> <laughs> I'll have a word with her later. <laughs> um, so the 630 this Wednesday, this Wednesday. fire practice here. Uh, yes. Are there any other announcements that I need to make that I'm forgetting? In that case, receive God's blessing for you. The Lord bless you and keep you. The Lord's face shine on you and be gracious to you. The Lord look upon you with favor and give you peace. Amen. Amen.
Good morning, Mark and Linda. We love you. Mark and Linda, we love you guys. We love you all. We love all of you. Good and morning. we wish you a blessed oh, week. Next time we'll get the pianist in it as well. Well, we tried, but Barb is very short and Sorry. you could not see her. So Sorry, I apologize. We will work on that. Have a great day.